Okay, so let's see. We're going to just keep on developing this area here. I think I'm going to refine some of these transitions just a bit. So I kind of know what's going on. So I'm going to grab the flatten 404 and figure out what this area here is supposed to do. So in this case, I've got this like uh, sort of sharp edge here. Let's see if it'll let me grab the other subtool. And it looks like um, originally I was thinking that this would be maybe more of a transitional feature. But just based on the scale here, I think what I'm going to do is just add, oops, add one more. So we'll go to insert. So now we have this new poly group, which I will go ahead and isolate. Put into its own poly group, and then I'll throw an inflate on here and increase poly groups. So when you do that, that's a little bit of a risky maneuver. If you've got multiple poly groups, you can see here, it's, I didn't see that these were two different poly groups, but they, they are because when I did that, it went ahead and put a crease there and I don't want that. So I'm gonna hit control W and then we'll just isolate this piece here again, invert it, control W to put a poly group on everything that's visible. And I think what I'm really trying to do here is, is get more of a corner all along this entire edge loop. So we can try move, this might work. Where is it? Move, but that's just gonna be on the edge itself. So it's not really, I'm doing every other one because each edge kind of hits the vert on the other side of it. I mean, that might, that might be effective here. And we're just kind of moving it along its axis and you can see here, in this case, I'm gonna just use the regular old move brush because it is just polygonal geometry, and then we could throw a crease. Now that everything is on one poly group, I can safely do my crease poly groups. And that's kind of what I was looking for. It may not be as consistent in terms of its width as I'm looking for, so let's just kind of adjust that. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this already, but one of the things that's useful when you're deciding on the amount of detail that you want to include is figuring out how big the object is. Because like if it's viewed from this close, like if it was a giant spaceship or something, you would want a whole lot of detail, but if it's viewed from far away, then you know you don't need to spend a whole lot of time with really, really small features. So I think for something like this, I'm gonna we'll just say like maybe it's the size of a of a car. So the biggest feature on a car, or the smallest feature on a car might be some kind of a panel line or the the door handle so we'll just kind of think about limiting the small features to something that's at least the size of a door handle so we don't end up spending time on stuff that nobody will ever be able to even appreciate okay so let's go ahead and kind of pave this guy back intensity of 49 is kind of a lot and again i think i mentioned this earlier it's hard to sculpt on something when you've got a subtool in the way. So sometimes you got to come in and isolate things a bit. Okay, that looks good. Let's hop over to our, our Z sphere, drop it to the bottom of the stack, enable edit topology. And once again, I've kind of forgotten my own role, which is start with the more complicated areas. Let's see, do I need to drop my color down a bit? And in this case, we have a center line. So whenever you have a center line, you want to make sure that it is actually, first of all, you have the center line. I wouldn't want this to, to I wouldn't want to retop this without a center line. And just make sure you don't end up with something where they're, they're not snapped to the center like that, right? Like that would be, that would be problematic. But this, this geometry here is relatively simple. I think I will add one more here. Here's actually a very important thing. So I'd like to add some, like an extra edge loop here. And if I try to start from the outside, let me actually deselect everything, and then go to the inside, sometimes this can be ineffective, right? Like it just gets confused. So whenever you're you're using retopology and you want to add an edge across the center, start your retop in the center, and that way you 
you will avoid any issues where Z ZBrush might be confused. I mean, it's always possible. We'll know here in a second. Right, okay, so that's also worth mentioning. Right now it's trying to, well, it should be trying to snap this to the surface, but it's not working. And I, I'm not entirely sure why this is, but my, my theory is because there are actually two verts there, uh, because it, uh, just for whatever reason, it's like doubling the information for where it's supposed to actually line up. So the way I'm going to handle this instead is I'm just going to draw that from the beginning where it's supposed to go. And that way I don't have to worry about snapping it and it should be okay. I think even if I did try to snap it, it would probably be okay. Let's see. Yeah. So just something about drawing into an edge that already exists on the center line. It just causes problems. And then we'll just do our same thing here where we're trying to maintain a consistent thickness all the way around. And I'm keeping a little bit of an eye on what's going on. Whoops. I may need to add another edge here. It's not on the center, so it's no big deal. Whoops, although I, I did just add a vert I didn't mean to. So when you're trying to keep things evenly spaced, the fewer you have, the easier that process is. But you do have to be mindful of whatever's happening on the other side. So I'm just kind of looking at this curvature. I could just select it, hit Shift D, and then hop back over to my Z sphere. And now I can see where the stuff is going to need to kind of connect to. And that, that'll help a little bit with matching that curvature. It doesn't have to be perfect. It should be okay. All right, so now let's do the inside. I'm going to uh, hold Control to select this as my next active vert to uh, begin drawing from. And tap the W key. I have to keep unmasking because when you hold Control, you can you can mask your your retop just as easily as you can mask anything else. And once it's masked, you can't move it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these smaller eyeballs here. And we'll just kind of do a, a loop here on the inside, or ring, whatever this is. And then we'll just stay in quads all the way through, and we should be good to go. All right, and do we need to put anything on the side? I think it's probably a good idea. Whoops. Tap the W key to go into move mode so I can move the camera. And I'm just thinking about this extruded area here. I'm going to give it thickness, so that might be sufficient. I'm not sure if I need to worry about adding any additional geo on the side there. So we'll just start here and see how that works. Tap the A key. Make poly mesh 3D. Hop back to the original tool. Hit append. Grab the new one. Tap the A key to leave our preview. Go to delete topo. Scroll down one, and there is our new geometry, and we'll pick this up in the next video.